I'm going to be honest with you, there are a lot of Canva apps that you don't need or don't really work in the way that you're kind of like, oh, this is so cool. It's going to be amazing. Nah, not really. The way I'm going to be speaking to this today is if you are a business owner, sometimes we get distracted by all the pretty shiny things. But what I want to show you today is some of the top Canva apps you actually need and some caveats of ones that are kind of cool, but you probably won't end up needing, but you might want to know about just in case and what ones I actually use myself as a successful business owner. So let's dive in. So thanks for joining me today. If we haven't met before, my name is Jackie and I'm a graphic designer who specializes in teaching business owners how they can create their own incredible brand and graphics, things that are strategic, things that don't waste their time and things that actually work to grow their business rather than just maybe even looking pretty, but not doing anything for their business. So today I want to talk to you about Canva apps. So if you didn't know, Canva, the design program that I rant and rave about all the time has a set of apps. So these are kind of created by external parties most of the time, not all the time. Um, and they are lots of different apps that you can use in, 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 in inside your Canva to make a process quicker or to do a funky thing that maybe Canva itself can't do. So you can find the apps by just opening up a design and clicking on the app section over on the left hand panel. And up here, this will be constantly changing. Like your apps will look different to my apps and its recommendations. Um, and so you can see here, there's a discover section. You can see all of these down here, like there's so many so different apps. It's actually not as many as I thought when I actually went through every single one of them and kind of like which ones are actually useful here, uh, but there are still quite a lot. And so I want to show you some more important ones. These ones here, like that are just kind of more from Canva. These are really great. These aren't technical. I don't technically call these apps because I don't feel like third parties, but using um, this to kind of create charts, 100% recommend doing. Um, so I'm not going to go into the actual Canva apps um, because they're right here and you should definitely be using those all of the time, but they're kind of already inbuilt into Canva and other spots. You might just have not have noticed them. So they're there in case you want to use those. I've got a whole video on the bulk create feature as well. I totally recommend using that if you're creating multiple graphics that are kind of got the same base but you might be changing the text in each one. Go and have a look at that tutorial if you would like more information on that. But one that I really want to show you first is the QR code. But I find there's some business owners who don't know this exists. You don't have to go to an external website to create a QR code for your graphics. You just have to go to apps and search QR code. If you don't see yours down here under popular, just literally search QR. You can, and you can just see here. You'll see that there's quite a lot of them here. These are all fancy ones that will create like a slightly different, like a fancy looking one that might have different colors in it or might have different pictures in it. Totally use those if you're feeling more advanced, but if you're just wanting a plain old QR code, using this QR code one is totally fine. All you need to do is click on it and you can insert your website. So with most of them, you'll have to just accept that you want to use it. So just look at this, check that you're happy with what it's allowing you, your computer to do and press open. Then all you need to do is type in here the URL you want your QR code to go to. So for me, I might do my website and I can go to customize where I can change the colors of it. So I can do black and white, or I can do maybe some of my brand colors. I'm going to stick it black and white just for the simplicity of this one. But in essence, all you need to do is enter the, your website in, press generate code, and it's going to pop a QR code directly in. You can even grab your phone right now and check that this works and it will, it will direct you to my website. Um, feel free to have a look there. I've just recently redesigned it and it looks really cool. Uh, but in essence, it's right there. You don't have to then go into like, a, 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 you don't have to go to Google and type in QR code generator and then like save that image and then import it into Canva. You can just do all of that within Canva, which I think is so useful. So, so feel free to have a play with some of these and you can see if I just change the margin here, it just adds in more of a margin around here. Um, you can even update, like say I'm like, oh, actually I want this to go to my podcast page. I can click on that, press update and it will change the QR code to kind of suit that. Um, you, watch, you just want to make sure with this particular QR code generator that you aren't creating a design and then you print it and then you realize you got the URL wrong or you want to change it because it, it won't update the back end of that. So that's one limitation with this version here. The next app I want to show you was called Type Gradient. So I'm going to type that into the typing section. You can see here that you've got Type Gradient here. This means that you can apply a gradient color effect to your text, which is so, so cool until you realize that it doesn't let you do every single font in the world. So obviously as a brand designer and as a brand strategist, I always encourage you to have a font that you use for your business and use that over and over again, because that's going to help create consistency, loyalty, and professionalism in your branding. So I don't love that this app at this point of recording, at least doesn't have access to every single Canva font or every single font inside your Canva to use. So say, for example, I wanted to create some text that said, what will you design? Design today. All I need to do is enter that text in here. So I'm going to actually just put what will you design today and make it a bit different. And I can choose in here some fonts and credit given, it does have a lot of fonts available here. There is probably that there's hundreds of fonts, but it does not have every single font. So what you want to do here is if it doesn't have your font to choose a font, that's the closest that it is. If you've got a really blocky text font, use the blocky text, a version that you can find to that. This might take you a little while to scroll through and to find a font that looks similar. 
that's where I find this app really fails is that it doesn't have every single font available. So it doesn't really suit every business, but I'm just going to choose this one, for example, for now, or you can even search fonts. So for example, my font name is Termina, not there. Uh, another font that I know people love to use is Bright, not there. Um, another font I like to use is Poppins it's there. So that's helpful. So I'm going to click on Poppins one. And I'm going to select the bold version because I feel like the bolder your text, the easier it is to see this fun gradient that we're about to apply. So I'm going to click Poppins here uh, and then press back. And so it's selected Poppins. I can select the alignment of my text and you can also see a preview of it here. So you can see here, it's got this gradient of color and it's applied it to the text. So usually within Canva, you can apply a gradient to a background and to some shapes at the moment, uh, but you can't do text. And so that's where this app really helps. So you can change if you want the text center aligned or left aligned or right aligned, you can change the spacing between your two lines of text. I like to keep it kind of nice and tight, but not too tight that it feels cramped. And then you can change your gradient. So you can see here, I can select different colors. If you've got brand colors that you know of, just grab the hex code and paste that in there. I'm going to show you how to find that hex code. So I'm just going to click on this, exit this for a moment, click on this color up here, and I'm going to hover over my color for my color palette. And you can see the gradient, the, 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 the color of it there. If I actually just click on this, you can see that it actually, I can copy and paste and select that text. So I'm just going to do that. Go back to my type gradient for a moment. I'll have to kind of reload things. I haven't saved that, which is annoying. Gonna So make sure you have your colors. Maybe you know the hex codes off the top of your head. Maybe you've got them saved in a notes app somewhere else. Or maybe you're just going to make it up. It's totally up to you. I add in my color here and I'm going to also just make up the other ones. I might make it this maybe a darker purple and maybe I'll go into more of a blue um, over here because I use blue in my branding as well. And that's going to be close enough for what I want to show you today. I'm also just going to rechange this text into Poppins. And you can see this preview down here, it's popped this in. So what I want to do is actually press add to design and it's going to add this design. I'm going to take away the color background so you can see this a bit better. And it says actually kind of made this image for me. If I zoom into it. It's not like totally crisp. So it's not like a, what we call a vector image where it's going to be something you can stretch to be as large as you want, uh, but it does do a pretty good job. So having that there and having a gradient available to apply to that is really, really cool. Um, so if you ever wanted to say, I wanted to change this to have that over one line or two lines, I could press update element and the canvas and going to update that to what it, what it is, what it looks like in my preview. What I can also do is change the gradient and where it goes. So I can actually hover over this little circle and drag it around to say, if I want it to be more of a diagonal and I want the colors to go here, I couldn't make the colors really short. I can press update element again, and you'll see that it's changed the way that the gradient looks. And you can also drag these little blobbies around too, if you wanted to have a different blob, or if you wanted to have multiple colors, you can actually click on the blank space and add in a different color. So click on the blank space here. I might add in a pink, move that across a little bit. And so you can kind of add in as many as you want to in here. Um, and you can see that now that I've applied, I can drag this out a little bit, update element, and it's applied kind of a wacky gradient to that. So you can have a play with as many colors as you want, angles as you want, um, gradients, and if it's a really strong, harsh gradient, or if it's a really gradual gradient and all of those things. All right, the next app that's quite similar to that one, and I also don't like for its font restrictions, but I do want to show you because it does have some, I do, I do think it has, it play, has its place, is called Typecraft. So I'm going to type in type again in here. And you'll see Typecraft come up here. So if, for me, it's this one looking here. And this one is where you can actually warp text to be what kind of a different kind of shape than what it currently is. So you'll see here, it's got some text in here. So I'm just going to change this to say like white deer tutorial. And again, it doesn't have all of your different font options. So it's got a few, but not all of them. So if you want to type in a font that you like, you might be able to see if it's there. Does This one doesn't even have poppins in it, which is kind of annoying. Um, I'll see if it's got anything else. Not really. So I'm just going to scroll and find the closest text that I kind of want to have a play with today. Let's do that one there. That is totally not my brand. You can also see that you can have it full as normal text, or you can have it outlined, or you can have it outlined with tech color on the inside and color on the outside. So feel free to play with that as well. I'm going to leave mine as none just to keep it simple for today. But what you can actually do, I'm actually going to take away tutorial. I think that's a bit too long is you can grab these little circles on top of the preview and drag your text around. So I could have text that looks like this and have it like higher in the middle. I could have it totally curved like that, or I could have it totally like this. You can play with these and do whatever you want with them. You notice the ones in the middle have these little um, bars that help you to play with the curve. And so I can go up and down, up and down, um, move it around. And so just knowing that you can actually play with those sections as well. The, the, if these two sections, this line here and this handle here is lined up with this handle here, it'll be quite a smooth angle um, curve. But if you kind of had one of them up and down, then it obviously is going to be quite pointy. 
And then you can then move that around. Like if you want that the accent to be over here, you can do that. You can pull that that way. You can do whatever you like with this. So I think that's kind of nice to know that if you need to actually ever warp some text, maybe to fit onto a t-shirt or to fit onto a box or to fit into a really funky wavy background, you can actually play with those things here. So once you're happy with it, this is such a weird design. Once you're happy with it, press add element to design. And just like with the other one I showed you, it's not quite a vector image. So you're going to have to pre-decide on your color of your text. You can pre-decide on the, on everything. I'm just going to paste in my hex code here and press update element. It's going to update that to, to the purple. Uh, but it's, it is a nice transparent background. Like say if I was to put the color here, it's got a transparent background. It's um, nice and clear and it's something that you couldn't have done otherwise if you wanted to do it. So just know those limitations around the fonts and the, the color changing ability and the vector format of it, if you know what those words mean. Um, but if you want to have a bit of fun with your text, this is a great app. A really simple one I want to show you now is just emojis. So you can actually like, if you're like me, then inside my uh, keyboard, I've inserted like I click on this, I can actually insert emojis into my text. But a lot of the time, if I was to actually export this as a design, then Canva won't be able to save the emoji properly. And it usually appears as a little black, as a little square. Like you probably have seen it before. It's like a little outlined square. And it's like, well, that's not my emoji. And now my whole design is falling apart because I was really going to use the emoji. So if you want to use emojis in your designs and you want to save them out of Canva, then what you want to do is actually type in here emoji into the Canva app section and there's emojis here. So you can just press open and you'll see all the different emojis that you're used to using. They look slightly different to at least my Apple ones, but they still have the same vibe to it. So say if I was to do sparkle, you can type that in there and you can see there's a little sparkle element here. And now I can actually change this to be whatever size I want it to be. I can change the colors to whatever I want it to be. Although obviously it will look a bit less like an emoji if you change the colors. And that's gonna save out perfectly fine rather than going a little bit haywire like these emojis you might do if you insert them natively inside the text. So knowing that one there is really, really helpful. I just wanted to interrupt for a moment to say that if you're enjoying this episode, I would love to invite you to my free three-part video training to help you to create your own stunning visual brand, helping you to grow your business faster and to feel and look a million bucks. If you're ready for the best year of business yet, then join over 1,000 business owners who have already taken part in the challenge to get started on creating your own brand. Join us today at whitedeer.com.au forward slash challenge. That's the color white, the animal deer.com.au forward slash challenge. Cannot wait to see you there. Let's get back to the episode. Another one that's a little bit more of a silly kind of one, but I thought I might show you anyway, is called Speed Paint. Um, this might be helpful if you're trying to really capture someone's attention with a new idea. So I'm going to delete this. I'm going to insert and click on Speed Paint. So I've just searched Speed Paint if you want to find it. And you can actually have a hand-drawn look on your design. So this used to be really popular like 10 years ago, but I feel like it could be coming back. So feel free to have a play with this if you want to do something a bit different for your marketing. So what you can do is choose yourself a file. I've just chosen a random design that I've done in the past. And you can choose the duration of the sketch. You'll be like, what is this going to be talking about? You'll see in a second what I'm looking at. You want to change the duration of the text, whether you want it longer or shorter, whether you want it to be colored in. Um, and whether you want a hand to appear. And I'm going to choose a little hand because that sounds fun. I'm going to click on the hand here, whether I want it to fade in or out, and then I can press animate image. And so what it's going to do is it's going to take a moment to look at my design and animate that image. So after that loaded for a little while, it actually took quite a few minutes. Um, it's created this design. So I'm just going to make this a bit bigger so we can see it and zoom in a little bit. And you'll see it's added a little hand in here. And if I press play, then what it's going to do is design pretty much my design that I've got here and draw it up. Obviously I look a bit funny as a person here um, and you probably create a more simpler design that doesn't have all the backgroundy kind of elements that I've got in here. Uh, but you can see how it's kind of just drawing and illustrating that. And I kind of like that the hand is there. So if you want to do a really clever marketing tactic where you want to kind of capture people's attention, maybe your design style is a bit more of a hand drawn style. This could really work well. So have a play with this, choose the settings and see if speed paint is an app that you might want to try. All right, and there's two more apps that I wanna show you that are kind of about creating different shapes. If you have what I call a more organic brand where it kind of is flowy and wavy and blobby, then these two apps are gonna be for you. One of them is literally called Wave Generator. And there is two of these. There's one called Wave Generator and Can Wave. I find them both are pretty good. It's totally up to you. Um, but if you press these, then what you can actually do is draw, is kind of draw your own wave. What I often find is that if you've got more of an organic looking brand, you might want a little pattern at the bottom of your designs, but Finding them on Canva is actually kind of annoying. It's kind of limiting. So if I just search wave in here, you can see there's a few of different versions here, but there's only so many versions that there, there are. So if you go to the wave generator, you can actually create your own. And so you can choose how pointy you want the waves to be, how many waves you want them to have, what color you want them to be. So I'm going to just press uh, maybe this one here, press add to design. Actually, I'm going to press randomize for a second and see what else comes up. So you can see 
Oh, I liked that last one. I kept on clicking. Don't click too fast or you might miss one that you like. I'm going to press add wave to design. And you can see this actually inserts as a vector file. So it's nice and easy for me to change the colors of. And then I might do another one. I might do another design here, add wave, add that in. And you can kind of create your own little wave pattern based on totally, like this is going to be totally unique to you because no one else is going to get this exact uh, wave combination. Um, and so if I'm just going to show you the other wave version as well. If I go to can wave, you can see it's quite similar in the way that it works in terms of, it kind of just has a few of them together. Um, you can choose if you want one layer or two layers or multiple layers, um, and you can choose the color variation between them, um, how kind of up and downy they are. Um, and, the, and the variation of the height. So there's a few different versions in there. If you want quite a few layers, then doing can wave can be really useful because it's got all of them in there. Um, and you can still change all the colors of each of these individually if you needed to as well. So I love both of those for creating things. Similarly, I love the one called uh, the helps really create blobs. And so blobs are really helpful. Again, there's two of these, both of them are much for muchness. If I just type in blob in here, I find a lot of designs are really helpful when you have like a little blob on it. So if I go to add to design, Again, this creates it as a format that I can edit the color of and I can change what the way the blob looks. So I can press generate, 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 generate. And if there's ever just, you would just want a blobby kind of organic circly kind of looking shape, then you can just create it really easily in here. I'll just show you the can blob one because obviously that's a little bit different again. And this one's actually helpful because you can select an outline of it too. So say if you wanted an outline version, you want it just to be nice and thick, um, add to design. And I could do like this cute little overlap with two little blobs that I've totally just kind of made um, from the design. So you can see I've only got the ability to edit the inside of the color though with this one, um, which is a bit of a bummer. So if you do want to have this one, make sure that you're, you're using the outline that you do select the color you want it to be perfectly the first time because uh, you won't better change that. But you can later on add an inside color into that, which is helpful to know um, with if you were to choose a solid one on this one and I pressed add to design, you can still change the colors of this one, just like the other app as well. So knowing that that's there, I think is really helpful too. So those are the different kind of apps that I find are actually useful for you and your business as a business owner. Like I said, there are some really great ones that Canva has inside mm -hmm. them itself already, kind of like um, all of these ones here, plus Magic Media. I've gone over that in a previous tutorial as well. And they can be really helpful as well as mock-ups. There are some top apps to kind of use, but these are some ones I haven't spoken about before that I think are also really, really useful. So so thank you for watching. If you've enjoyed this one, let me know which app you want to try next. If there's any that I've missed in here that you also love, and maybe we can sort of have a list of some other really great apps you might want to try um, and explore these apps section every now and then. I think just having a bit of a scroll of it every few months and seeing what's available can be really useful to make sure you're not missing any ones that are going to save you a lot of time or make your designing a lot easier. So thanks for watching and I'll see you in two weeks for another tutorial. Bye.